Have you ever felt boxed in by binary thinking? Like there were more shades of gray than it was black and white as you were led to believe? Seeing yeah. that everything doesn't have to be yes or no mm -hmm. or good or bad or right. right and wrong or black and white. Right. It's time for us to live in the gray, live right. in the discovery. You start to open yourself up to be able to see that everything's not matter of fact all the time yeah. and absolute yeah, and yeah. it's only this way or that way. Right. You can get free. In today's episode, we begin our Deconstruction 101 series where we unlearn binary thinking and we talk about the importance of going beyond right and wrong thinking. And I'm Stephon Lamar. And I'm Britta Shea. And we are a married couple who have been in ministry for 20 years and we want to explore all of this together with your tough questions and help you to unlearn everything to relearn what you now believe. Welcome to Unfiltered with Stephon and Britt. This is a safe space. Helping you to freely think. And discover what you believe. Let's get into it. What's up everybody? Welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back to another episode. Just so we can introduce ourselves because we tend to forget this. Right. <laughs> I'm Britta Shea. And I'm Stephon Lamar. And we're so excited to begin another episode with you here yeah. today. And as always, we start by defining what deconstruction is because that is the lenses in which we want you to view yeah. and listen to the content. So deconstruction to us is to unlearn everything in order to relearn what you now believe. So let's get into our very first segment. Yeah. It is go off. Go off. <laughs> <laughs> so recently things have been picking up for us as far as, you know, views and comments yes. and Definitely everybody comment. has an opinion. <laughs> <Subscription>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more keying in on the opinions and the yes. comments. And we knew that would happen. That's why we said bring on the comments. <laughs> and we know more are coming. <laughs> yeah, so we know there will be many more down the line. But in this go off, we want to talk about the frustrations of deconstructing, yes. especially in public. Yes. Uh, not a lot of people actually do what we're doing. They actually usually keep it quiet, kind of process, you know, behind the scenes where nobody's yeah. <laughs> knowing what's going on yeah. and the things that they are questioning um, or the things that they let go. Yeah. And for us, we chose to become a public uh, platform where we can create yeah. a safe space for people that don't feel safe enough to express this right. out loud and on their social media or yeah. with their friends and family. We've gotten so many yeah. DMs because the people who want to hold on to their belief are very loud in the comments. <laughs> they are. And it makes people who are going through this process feel unsafe to share in right. the comments. But they DM, DM yeah. us privately yeah. and they tell us how much this is so helpful, yeah. how much they are, you know, letting go of the old things and rediscovering what they now believe. Yeah, and the cool part is just seeing them regurgitate what we've already shared is that we want to make this a safe space. Mm -hmm. And so literally we've had DM saying thank you for creating a safe space for the conversations, yes. for us to freely think, for mm -hmm. us to discover and, and walk through our process of what we believe for ourselves, right? Because yeah. what's faith if it's not your own belief, mm -hmm. right? At the end of the day, a lot of us are believing a lot of stuff someone yeah. else helped us to believe or indoctrinated us to believe, whether that was your church your mm -hmm. family your granny your mom your dad it doesn't matter who it is but like what do you believe and yeah. i love that people have been responding in that mm -hmm. way you may not be seeing it but we are and we're so grateful for what god is actually doing through this yeah. right because we're still christians mm -hmm. <laughs> we had to we had to let them know to that just that clear to, <laughs> we're still christians yeah. right uh, but we're going through a process of breaking things down and that's what deconstruction is so. Yes. So question. The go off segment is all about the frustrations of deconstructing. Yeah. So I want to ask you, what are some emotions that you felt within this time that we've been publicly mm. deconstructing? What are some of the frustrations even before that mm -hmm. of this deconstruction journey that you've had? I mean, I've had a, a, a couple of feelings that I would share and I would probably share like two or three right now real fast. Okay. I would say initially it was excitement, mm -hmm. right? Which I've never heard a lot of people talk about because it was discovery. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my gosh, what? I didn't even notice this. Then it was like disappointment. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, why no one told us? Yeah. Or why didn't they tell us everything? Or why was this hidden? Or why? Maybe it's because of a lot of different reasons. Yeah. A lack of education, a lack of information, or uh, misappropriation, whatever. But for me, I was just like, oh. So it went from highs and lows. There's a lot of highs and lows in this process. Yeah. But the one I think would probably hit me the most because I'm extrovert. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm life of the party. I like people. To, I love community. I love people around. I love that. I feel like when I boiled it down to even right now, just thinking about it, it's probably like 
a feeling of loneliness mm. and abandonment. Yeah. Um, there's a process like in church, mm-hmm. and I'm about to go off a little bit from like, especially because I'm a pastor, was a pastor, youth pastor for many years, over yeah. a decade. And every time I transition from different places, I, I transition well, mm-hmm. I didn't leave wrong, right. no moral failures, nothing crazy, right? Yeah. Um, but they're just moving new city, right? Yeah. Just new, new things in life for us. And the transition, try to transition well every time. And it's like all the people that you minister to and love on and families and the late nights and all the stuff that you do, mm-hmm. like when you transition, it's almost as if you don't exist. Yeah. Just from just just from the position of like a pastor mm-hmm. and then even Christians that are just going to church. Sometimes you don't get that back. You're right. like, man, I, I can understand it. Like, not that it should be a hierarchy, but it's like, man, I was literally with your kid. I, I, I put eight hours into this event. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I was here all day for this event that they were a part of. And mm-hmm. and not that I need a big old gift and you calling me every week, but it's like legit, like you are forgotten. Yeah. And so then throw deconstruction on top of that, yeah. you're abandoned, you're lonely. Yeah. And it's like, stay away from them, watch out for that. Yeah. And that, if you're deconstructing, be expected of that. That's going to happen. Yeah. And so for me, it's like annoying because it's like for us to be the body of Christ and be uh, talking about unity and about t- togetherness, it's like we're together up until you disagree with me. Yeah. Up until I disagree with you. Up until we have two different points of views and perspectives. It's like, wait watch out for them watch out for him yeah. don't do that don't support that yeah. oh and then people start talking about you like even using their platforms mm-hmm. you're not talking about them but they're talking about you and it's right. like wow like dude like what if we just did the work mm-hmm. what if we had the conversations that we're actually trying to do right here in this space with our yeah. own budget with our own cameras with our own lighting with our own mic with nobody's tithe of dollars like legit mm-hmm. trying to help people to really break down the word break down the bible and deconstruct and break it down in fragments so they yeah. can really learn how to look at the bible in its fullness or what we do have have right now but no instead you hear people saying oh man watch out for them yeah. <laughs> they have, everybody wants to deconstruct well once you go learn about what it's what is what it actually is before you start talking against it or come have lunch with somebody yeah. and don't worry about debating with them mm-hmm. but actually just having lunch with them don't even worry about talking about faith just do life right and i think that's the part that ticks me off when mm-hmm. i go off about this because the loneliness that you shouldn't feel um, when you are a Christian, because right. <laughs> we're always talking about the body, yeah. but the body is broken. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we learn how to push people away. And that's where I feel like the loneliness and the abandonment happens. My yeah. team and my circle is tight. We got yeah. a tight circle, but I'm just saying it's just weird that out of all these different people and places that we help, yeah. including you, mm-hmm. right? Let worship for places and helping young people through all these years, administrate it in different ways. And it's like not even a care of like really caring for us yeah. as much as we care for other people. And so that's the part that ticks me off, but that's why I feel loneliness and abandonment is what I felt through yeah. deconstruct, yeah. deconstructing in front of people. Yeah, deconstruction can definitely be a lonely space. That's why we're creating this space here Mm -hmm. for community so that people can feel Mm -hmm. safe to explore this stuff. And like when we were talking about it as people were going crazy in the comments. (laughs) Or even in the text messages. Or or text or call, whatever. Um, I remember you were saying to me like maybe the safe space is also for them too. You know, the people who are having a hard time hearing this information and they are not ready to let go and they feel like they need to challenge us instead of you know taking the information and challenging themselves to go deeper um maybe it is a space for them and i'm fine with that you know i'm fine with you getting this information it's new to you because it was new to me it was mind-blowing and it was uh, hard to let some things go Mm -hmm. and you know but i i just wish that everyone would come at it with the mindset of like I'm here to process. I'm here to actually be open to hear you, not to immediately try to defend the faith and defend defend the Bible Bible and defend God. 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 (laughs) Yeah. Like instead it's like, okay, here's some new information I never heard before. What do I do with this? Right. Let me go ahead and compare and contrast to what I've been taught. Let me go and do critical thinking yes. and talk about this, you know? Yeah. So for me, um, the frustration has been those things that you've named, but mm-hmm. also I've had a genuine frustration about, uh, I'll say things that were taught to us yeah. that I feel like was used for political agendas yes. and um, control mm-hmm. uh, to make us behave in certain ways morally or to support certain things that mm-hmm. if we really knew what was going on, we probably 
I, I wouldn't for sure support things like, you know, genocide and right. and war that's going on yeah. right now in this current moment. Yeah. Um, it's being a brush is being painted that mm-hmm. we're supporting Israel. Right. You know, when really what's really happening behind the scenes, you know, mm. like <laughs> like I don't want to go too deep into it because I want to do a whole podcast on it. Right. But I'm naming a specific issue like that, because yeah. honestly, when I was growing up in our black church, we didn't talk much about nope. standing with Israel and all of this stuff. Nope. It wasn't until I started getting exposed into evangelical circles yeah. and churches that I started to hear stand with Israel and all mm-hmm. of this stuff. And so. I'm watching right. whole communities, whole families, children, innocent people be killed over a political agenda when it all boils, boils down to it is resources. Right. So it has nothing yep. to do with us standing with them because it's the right thing to do biblically right. or because it's God. It has something to do with what resources is America trying to get from over there? You know, that it's like so it's on. so much to go into and I, I'm not trying to go there, but that's something that recently hit me yeah. that I'm so frustrated about is that we're not telling the full truth all the time so help me god yeah so it it really it literally angered me and brought me to tears one night just just talking to you and talking through it and i feel like that's the frustration is when we learn things Mm -hmm. we need to as a church as a body we need to strip away all of our cultural ties and the colonization of everything and just learn it according to what was God's intent. Yes. If we're believing that scripture is God inspired, well, what was the intent of this inspiration? What does this mean? Let's go deeper. Mm -hmm. And it just hurts to see church people, the church Mm -hmm. um, and our leaders to back political agendas over loving people. Yeah. And so uh, something like that actually frustrates me. And that's something that ties into the comments. I'm seeing people defend hate more than they are defending love. It's like we want to cast people out into hell. We we want people to be to feel excluded and not accepted. And we want them to feel othered. And that's the part that hurts. It's like y'all are missing it here. We're talking about love, which is what Jesus did. He displayed for us here on this earth. Mm -hmm. And we're not living in love. We're We're so busy trying to like uphold the law right. that we're not trying to live in love. Nope. And so that's the part that yeah. frustrates me and it's so yeah. hurtful cuz it doesn't seem like it's going to change. It no. doesn't seem like no. people I mean want it's the change. same regurgitated thing. We said it mm. before it happened. Bring on the comments. We already yeah. know. I was like, "Give me the same scriptures they're going to throw." I already knew the scriptures they were going to throw out. And so it's like even with the education behind it, no one was really trying to even hear the education. Absolutely. They just wanted to give me their rebuttals. And so yeah. at the end of the day, it's not like, hey, we can have friendly debates and talks and whatever discussions and really dialogue is what we really learn need to learn how to do. But we don't teach that. We don't yeah. show it in the church because here's the thing. It's a form setting. It's a mm-hmm. setting where it's lecture style. You sit and listen for 30, 45 minutes. I know yeah. I used to do it. And I also said, let me stop doing that. Let's have question and answer for these kids yeah. so they can actually break it down for themselves, which is nothing but deconstruction exactly breaking it down for yourself even if they didn't want to answer the questions mm-hmm. at least i gave them time to do that and that took me time to do that because i wasn't used to doing that so right. i i unlearned what i learned as a speaker preacher pastor whatever mm-hmm. so that the kids could actually have their process as well and how many times you do that as an adult yeah don't worry i'll wait <laughs> you don't you right. sit in the service for an hour you mm-hmm. get your worship you get everything spoon spoon fed to you mm-hmm. and so that doesn't it, it, it makes sense why my friends wants to call me and say hey you got to tell me why it says this yeah. and show me i'm like bro do the do the work yeah like you're being challenged do the work like you yeah. want to challenge me just do the work now you come back and say i looked at some of the stuff you talked about it still don't make sense i respect that but like you're trying to make me give you everything yeah. and it's just like church hey pastor spoon feed it to me yeah. hey pastor give it to me let me know what we're talking about and then if i don't like what you're talking about do we gonna say something that mm-hmm. happens all the time at church mm-hmm. versus we don't really set up circles where people can actually talk and convene about what they heard and learn and there's some churches that do have these segments where they have teaching and trainings we've been at some churches like that on tuesdays and wednesdays to go deeper in the word but mostly it's always forum lecture style ted talk vibes yeah. and it's like you're going to get what i'm giving you and that's it and it's very hierarchy mindset mm. and so we got to do better than that in yeah. order for us to actually really grow as a church yeah and understanding and learning and education of mm-hmm. what the word is telling us to do absolutely that's good so to close this out i would just say let's give them like 
I guess some advice on how to navigate through the frustrations if mm. you're in the process of deconstructing. Um, what are some good ways that they can navigate through these frustrations to come out on the other side? I mean, for me, I would say this, the friends and people that I've talked to, family members, even people that I don't know on YouTube and the ethers of social media and the internet, is that like for me and you, I think we indirectly did this not really knowing because we had comments, we had responses like, oh, we know this, we can respond to this. And it was like, pause, mm -hmm. take a pause first mm -hmm. before you respond anyways, think about the heart of why you're responding. Um, you know, because you're going to be responding in, in coming out of a space where in our Christian spaces, in our church spaces, we are literally taught to defend. That's what apologetics yeah. is, to defend the faith. Yeah. So you can even do that in deconstructing, right? You can even make deconstruction your faith base that you actually defend. Yeah. And that's the whole par part of reason why we're deconstructing. And so we don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. It's actually so we have guided conversations and thought through, you know, dialogues to help us be better. So yeah. I would say pause. I would also say give yourself some time to uh, think. That's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Freely think, think through this stuff because yeah. discovery is actually best found in in, in thinking and in curiosity. Yeah. And so it's going to take time. So you can't rush through this. Mm -hmm. This is not like you know your Bible study where you're going to do like ninety days and we're going to be through this devotional. It's not really like that. You are learning how to break things down. Yeah. And that's harder than just taking on the full understanding of all this stuff. Yeah. And it's okay. Be patient. But when it comes to dealing with others, even like me with loneliness, I think it's okay to express it to some of your friends that you do trust. Yeah. Challenge them in the friendship part. Challenge them in the unity part. Challenge yeah. them in the community part. Mm -hmm. More so than the scriptures. And let me try to tell you what the scriptures say. It's like, bro, I don't feel like you was really there for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like you was really trying to just tell me about the background of scripture versus yeah. just being a friend. And yeah. so I think that would probably be helpful from my end. That's what my advice would be. What would mm -hmm. be yours? Uh, for me, I would say, as we said from the very beginning, community is essential. Exactly. So if you can find some people who are like minded and mm -hmm. who are going through this process, um, that will be very helpful for you. So one thing we're actually thinking about and we want to hear your you guys opinion mm -hmm. on is we're thinking about starting a private community specifically for people who are on this deconstruction journey. We mm -hmm. want you, like we always say, to have a safe space to explore right. these things and not have someone going back and forth with you in the comments. Yeah, it's not for the trolls. Scripture. This is for people that really want to. Yeah, no, we want to have a place where you guys could come into this community and it's safe for you to explore topics. You can feel okay to post that question mm -hmm. because everybody is in the same space of not judging you because right. you have a question about your That's faith. Good. So we're thinking about starting a community like that please let us know in the comments if that would be helpful to you if you would like that if you would be a part of something like that right. go off in the comments about it <laughs> <laughs> and let us know like yeah please start the community <laughs> we would be in like today yes. so yeah that's that. that's what i would say so let's go ahead and wrap this segment we'll go ahead and get into the topic yeah. for today in our next segment which is what does that even mean what does that even mean <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we're exploring what does that even mean, which the topic in the episode title for today is unlearning binary thinking. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys ever heard, even heard that term before, but right. I'm sure you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I'm sure you for have sure. done or thought through things through binary lens yeah. lenses. So I want us to uh, define what that is just to kind of uh, give us a basis. And yeah. also, this is something that we'll be exploring through our series of Deconstructing 101. Yeah. The reason why we started this series is because when we started yeah. We didn't have any basis on where to start. No handles. <laughs> no, like just we searching for people to help us, please. We had no clue. Like, where do we start this thing? Like, we know what we are starting to explore. We're having challenges here, but where do we begin? And right. for us, we started to think through how we think. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so I want to go ahead and uh define what binary thinking is. So Binary thinking is also known as dichotomous thinking, mm -hmm. which is where there are two sides and you can only pick one. So for an example, that would be black versus white, right, right and wrong, right. good versus evil. Right. You've probably heard of this language before. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so um, that's what binary thinking is. So first question that I want to ask is what, uh, what binary thought? 
did you have like from the very beginning what is one of the first binary thoughts that you had that you had to unlearn i don't even know like i've been battling with like those thoughts because there's so many different things like since i was a kid i've just had to like pick left or right you know right or wrong and you usually try to pick right you know mm-hmm. and then like i guess when you do wrong you realize you pick wrong <laughs> mm-hmm. you know and yeah. some of it's trial and error you're like wait i don't know i mean i feel like we'll probably talk about this later but like heaven or hell i mm-hmm. think what that one's probably top on the list like mm-hmm. you know it's like so you're telling me this god that loved us he died for us he sent his only begotten son here mm-hmm. to die for us mm-hmm. And then that that penalty was called sin, right? Right. And that penalty of sin, which we gonna we were talk about this one day, but like what is sin? Like the penalty of sin was the separation from God and man, right? Mm-hmm. So when he died, he mm-hmm. actually not only paid the price for sin, yeah, but he covered the gap of sin, mm-hmm. the gap of separation between us and God, right? Yeah. So it's like, well, if he paid it. I think do we like is there like a repayment <laughs> like is it like is, it, is the subscription trial free right. trial air the free trial over right like because sometimes people talk as if like you know you can't do that because then you know it's like and I already know the comments gonna come please mm-hmm. come talk whatever <laughs> it's like if Jesus paid it all mm-hmm. all to him I owe like mm-hmm. like I, I, I like he paid it so it's no other going back on right, it right? right you know and so for me it's like well then that means that everybody makes it into this place called mm. heaven. Mm. or do they you getting spicy i don't huh? know i mean <laughs> i'm just being honest because we're doing this live with everybody so yeah. like judge me if you want to i'll take the i'll take the judgment mm-hmm. so somebody else on the other side can actually like wait for the answers as well but it's that mm-hmm. I, like more than anything mm-hmm. because i want to be with my father i want to be with the, with with my god that saved me that saved us all mm-hmm. but at the same time it's like dang it you know the the question of like what about the, the people in other countries that never heard of the gospel what about people yeah. that didn't know fully about the bible and right, all this other stuff right like, where do they go right so binary thinking can't work there it's I like literally it's so funny you, <laughs> you, know, you brought this I'm up i'm like really like nervous to talk about this but no, i'm doing it for the people so, on the other side it's of the so camera. funny you brought this up because i just saw a post literally this morning where somebody we follow who's okay. in the deconstructed okay. space posted about how um, you remember those gospel tracks that we used to get back yeah, in the day yeah. where like the one where God's sitting on the throne <laughs> and your life is on a big screen right. display, yes. like at the end of time when you, you know, <laughs> go and you're judged or yeah. whatever. And he was saying that this there's a person standing in front of God and he's telling them, you know, to go to hell. And he's mm. like, he did everything morally right. Technically, if mm. he was a Christian, mm-hmm. he would have went to heaven. Wow. He did everything morally right, but the only thing that he didn't do was believe in Jesus or pr- pray right. a prayer of salvation. Which, so, is that, <laughs> is that, what does that even mean? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know like right oh, did they but do that? it like, just yeah. it made I mean, me think of what you just said it's right. like it can be good people right. who never prayed a prayer of salvation yeah. or didn't live a a quote-unquote christian life right right but they end up in hell that doesn't right kinda, well, like even, you said the people who even don't know about jesus that live in other countries other, that it's other countries that have not been reached there's certain translations of the bible that has not even been translated and we can talk about the translation one day but it's like they haven't even got a piece of the bible right right so what happens to them right you know because i've heard you know growing up it's, he's not coming back to everybody who heard it like yeah that's cool and all you say you're in America and you got all the like different translations they say right. over 44,000 translations that's what they say mm. like you got all that right in your Bible your Bible app you can just right. pull it up on your phone meanwhile somebody in the mountains of uh, <laughs> Lake Minnetonka <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can think of a, a mountain <laughs> but it's somebody that's <laughs> so it's somebody in a place that is unreachable right, right and right, we, right. we have friends we have some affiliations with people that are helping to translate the Bible yeah. as well in Mexico as well. And it's like, even like Lecrae was doing it at his concert, like helping mm-hmm. to give to like break down a scripture. And it's like, but what if they died before yeah. that breakdown happened? What yeah. if they died before somebody translated the scripture for them and mm-hmm. they never heard it? Right. Where right. did they go? Right. That's not their fault. Mm-hmm. Right. So like, but no one wants to talk about that. They're just like, Oh, well, you know, kind of, it's one of those yeah yeah nobody right, we can't right. talk about it right yeah yeah and so for me that doesn't sit well with me mm-hmm. because 
if we're doing this thing, go, you know, we grew up in the church. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so we know our great commission, mm-hmm. you know. Go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> go out I mean, to go, all the world. All the world. Preach and teach, teach it, right? Yep. right? Like highways and byways. The right. highways and the byways, byways is crazy. the ones way up there no one knows like yeah. you know what i'm saying so it's like well if he's saying go to, i want everybody to know about jesus yeah. i want everybody to know that he's the way the truth and the light i want them to know there's hope there mm-hmm. but at the same time i also cannot lie and say i've thought about the people that have not heard the message mm-hmm. i've also thought about what about this what about people that have heard what about people that have heard the message but not have heard it with the right heart mm. Like, what if they're like, mm-hmm. you know, they had a bad situation that happened in their life and it's hard for them to even see that God cares for them. Right. They right. lost somebody. They're struggling. And it's so like, does like he understands our hearts. Well, people, right. his, our hearts are evil. You know, people love to say that, you know, guard your heart above all else. That's a whole thing. And it's just always like throwing the scripture back at it. But it's like, no, legit. This like, I, let me tell this story. My Bible teacher. Mm-hmm. I, so I went to a Christian school early on in ninth grade. So which means that like in some ways indoctrination, but at the same time, this Bible class that I took in ninth grade, like starting out in my private school, was really good because it was like almost like a seminary class. Mm-hmm. He talked about worldviews and other religions. Mm-hmm. So he tells this story, and I just remembered his name. That's crazy, Mr. Bolt. Mm-hmm. He actually was saying how he was an atheist mm. in college. Wow. He had lost his son. His son had died, mm-hmm. and he was mad at God. Mm. Like, for no reason, don't know why his son died, just died, and he's like, I'm mad. I don't believe anymore. Mm-hmm. So a woman would come to him every day in class and talk to him and talk to him about God and he just wouldn't listen to her. And she's like, I'm praying for her. He's like, don't pray for me. Mm-hmm. He's literally one of those like hard-hearted people is like, don't pray for me. She's like, she's like, I'm praying for you. And one day she said it again and he said, don't pray for me. And she said, if only you knew what, what you were saying. Mm-hmm. And he said that hit him harder than her saying, I'm praying for you. So mm-hmm. he kept thinking, what does that mean? Hmm. What does that even mean, right? right? Right, And so he went home, he started thinking about it, he started processing and long story short, he had an encounter with God eventually where he forgave God and he went through all the process and hence why he is now a Bible teacher. But he went through that process out of an experience, yeah, not just education, not just because of like what was in the text, but his own story and own connection, his own relationship, not just rules and religion. Yeah. And he came back or not even come. He didn't even come back. It was his first time receiving Christ. And it's crazy to me, like a person like him that had a hard heart that was broken because literally it's something that didn't happen. It wasn't his fault. Yeah. He lost his son. What does that mean for many other people? Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. I know the heartless people are going to say, well, Hey, that's how it goes. You got to still accept them. You can't be having bad heart, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's easy for you to say until you have something that happened to you that you cannot forgive yeah. God for, yeah. or you you're so broken that you can't believe that he is really real. Mm-hmm. And that he really will save us all because maybe you grew up in a place where no one ever saved you or maybe no one ever helped you. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. What about that? That's a whole nother thought. Yeah. Well, it like, actually you know? goes with my answer that I was going to say, which is for me, one of the first things that I had to let go of in binary thinking is that God is good all the mm. time. That's a good um, one. I was that we say that so much in church right that's a cliche god is good all the time and all the time god is good (laughs) you know and i going through different parts of the journey in my faith and we talked about it on episode one if you haven't heard it go back and listen Mm -hmm. um but through losing so much losing a promise losing uh our children three you know three children it really made me question is god really good all the time and i've heard you know people youth pastors specifically a lot of times speaking to (laughs) youth always saying if it's good it's god right and if it's not good then it's not god right right but then i have to challenge that thought because I'm like, I look in the Bible and I see God doing some not so good things. <laughs> mm, exactly, exactly. Like if it was us that were doing it, it's literally yeah. a sin and we're supposed to go to hell for it. But, yep. you know, so that yep. that cha- yep. like that's just straight up. And so mm. I had to literally let that go. Like it's OK, because mm. it's so funny, like in church, we'll we'll give God a pass for a lot of things. Yes. Like we'll say when it's good, Oh my God, it was God. Yep. Right. But then if it's something that's bad, then it's, um, Oh, that was just a trial that maybe you had to right, face. You just right. needed to go through that. You know, there was a lesson in there. Yeah. There's a blessing in the lesson. Like <laughs> that was a good cliche. Like we talked about it last week. 
in the last episode of like you know like he's breaking you just enough like yeah. what that doesn't make right, any sense right. you know what i'm saying i know you can try to make it make sense it's like i said we yeah. we make it make sense for god but no one else like you exactly. just said right like when he when it's bad as he don't get the credit but when it's good mm-hmm. he gets all the credit right. and i don't even know let me be honest as a christian i don't even know if god cares about the credit or either one he's like <laughs> yo give it all to me but right. i think we've been trained and been taught to actually say okay if it's not that good it's mm-hmm. not god yeah. if it's good and great it's god like the saying uh, there's another saying um everything that's good what is it everything that's good to me may not be good, be good for, me. for me or something like that it might be the other way around everything yeah. good for me may not like, be good, good to, to me, me. Yeah. something like that y'all know the same <laughs> um but it's just like uh that's such a question mark over my head <laughs> and i had to in order to reconcile it yeah. i had to say it's okay like i i feel like maybe I, literally this is just the straight up truth <laughs> when I would talk to Stevon through these things, I would literally say to him, I don't know if God really cares. As, not that he doesn't care about us. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I don't know if he cares about as much of the things that we say that he cares about. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I just, I don't know. It's something that I'm still like fighting with. Yeah. You know, I'm still trying to figure out yeah. because if you are all good, but then there's not all good things that come from you. Mm. But it makes me question, are we really the ones who are putting unrealistic expectations oh, on God? God? That's true. You know, rather that he's not being good or bad. And this was the thing that I, I end up coming up with is I believe that God is just here. Yeah. He's just here. The promises that I can think of in the Bible mm. from God was that he said, I would never leave you and never forsake you. Said. All of the other stuff that we're adding is like, <laughs> okay, that's great and all because we think it's God. He has right. good intentions, good character, whatever, his love, right? right? But really, if you think about it, only thing I can lean on is that he will be here yep. and present with me. So that means whether something good is happening to me yep. or something bad is happening to me, right. he's going to be present in the midst right. of it, right? And that he won't leave me while I'm in it. Yes. I may not even feel like he's here, right. but the fact that he promised me that mm. he is, that's all I can hold on to. I can't hold on to, oh my God why would you let this happen to me god it's right. not a good thing or oh right. my god this is amazing god really brought this to me right right i just have to live in no matter which way it's going if it's good if it's bad right. if it's indifferent if it's in the middle right god is just here he's here. He just promised to be with me through it all right. and to never leave me and i made my peace with that right. that's, that's where good. that's where i live that's good it reminds me of like the garden right Mm. Adam and Eve got rules just like we got rules and things that we know about even as you know deconstructed Christians right Mm -hmm. we all like all of us have rules that we see in the scripture love God and love others who also says love yourself right so those are like some things we need to make sure that we do like to love right and when we don't do that we see the the issues that that go on after Mm -hmm. sometimes it's bad sometimes it's not so good whatever and when he's still there yeah. Like when they had the rule not to eat from here, but they still ate from that tree. And then where was God? He was right there. Yep. He was right there. Present. You know, yep. and I mean, even with people like you can say he got, they got punished or whatever, got banished or whatever, but he was still there. Right. Right. Because right. he, had, he had to honor and they had to honor the rule that he put in, in the garden. Yeah. But he never left them. Right. Mm-hmm. Or forsaken them. And so that's the part where I'm like, I'm with you. I yeah. really, really believe that's really good. Thank you, babe, for sharing that. I, that's really good to know. In the midst of your journey, whether mm-hmm. you're on this side or deconstruction side, and you're like, I wonder, like, because that's the other part that I probably would say mm-hmm. on the other side of deconstruction, it feels like sometimes it's God here. Mm. Like, do I feel like, you know, and then it's like, yeah, he is. Like, because mm-hmm. you got to, like, get free from all the, like, oh, I prayed hard. I was speaking in tongues. Or I fasted right. this week. Or I did a devotional. Or I went to church 1,800 times this year, so I'm good. <laughs> and I pay my tithes every week. Right. Like, like. He's here regardless. Right. He's God. He's He's not like hinging on if you do those things because he's sovereign. He can do eat all those things even if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. God's yeah. still going to be there. So I love that. That's a great point to this kind of conversation that we're having right now. Yeah. So on the alternative of binary thinking is obviously non-binary right, thinking. Right, exactly. I want to define that for us real quick. So non-binary thinking is the belief that there are endless answers mm-hmm. 
that go outside of the boxes that we are used to. And also as a tagline to that, it's also embracing the both and over what's right and wrong. So I think that that's something that we really shifted Mm -hmm. was we live more in the both and everything is not always black and white. There are shades of gray in the middle. And I think you preached about that uh, before uh, to the youth. And I think that that's an amazing, beautiful place to live in, in the place of nuance and seeing yeah. that everything doesn't have to be yes or no mm-hmm. or good or bad or right. right and wrong or black and white right. it's time for us to live in the gray live right. in the discovery right. so, i think the gray though that's the reason why people struggle with the gray and it's almost like this uncharted t- territory or like unspoken territory mm-hmm. you talk about it's like you're living in it you just don't talk about it. it's gray yeah. space it's 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 the gray area you ever seen the gray scale on a on the color you know, grid, it's like gray's in the middle and then black's way over here and then white's way over here, right? And so that's usually in the middle where we live and that's where the gray is. And when usually the gray is where the gap is. Yeah. Like we don't, like it's a gap between our belief. Yep. It's a gap between what we are learning. It's a gap between us and God, even mm-hmm. though Jesus died. And I just said he closed the gap, but there's still some gaps, right? Yeah. And so at the end of the day, the part that we have to learn how to do is embrace the gray, like yeah. you just said, embrace yep. it. Just like live in it. I wouldn't say living it long, but I would say acknowledge it. Yeah. I think what, what freed me was like acknowledging it. Like I was like for a long time having this cognitive dissonance mm. where I was like trying to act like, you know, I was disconnected from thought, emotion, reality, just so people don't know what that means uh, when it came to that. And so I was like, no, this is not really happening to me. And so I tried to like say I'm an optimistic person, but I was like, yo, I'm not just because I'm a pest, just because I'm trying to push away pessimism yeah. where like things that could happen. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I want to look. I want to hope and wish for the things that may happen. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm glass half full versus half empty. And it's like, no, you got to actually look at both. It is half full and it's half empty. Yeah. That's the both and method, the yeah. both and mindset mm-hmm. versus either or. And a lot of us are in prison in our minds because we are living in the either or binary thinking. Yeah. It's literally a messed up everything thing literally like mm-hmm. this whole year like even down to the the playoffs and in sports girls girls college basketball which re- went crazy this year to nba to kendrick and lamar kendrick mm-hmm. lamar and drake and music everybody who's the goat we have these battles yeah. and it's a western mindset of like mm. who's the best yeah which is really us on this side when why can't it be four or five goats yeah why can't it be many different goats right why can't it be mike kobe and lebron and KD yeah. and you know many more you can add on the list right no 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 you gotta pick one or the other right and so we have these arguments or who's doing better in the disc Kendrick or Drake you know yeah. like you know so it's all these arguments about these different things who's better is it Kate, uh, Caitlin Clark or you know no what's my girl name Angel Reese like yeah. it's like no they both dope like right, it's okay right. but we do that all the time and we try to push this agenda and it really even comes down to our politics like Democratic mm-hmm. or Republican and yeah. it's like yo I actually don't believe none of y'all right. <laughs> you know I'm saying right. you know but at the end of the day if we had a more open mindset to the non-binary thinking i really believe we would find more solutions mm-hmm. we would be more free yeah we'll be more healthy mm-hmm. and so i think for you for you on the other side of this if you start to open yourself up to be able to see that everything's not matter of fact all the time yeah. absolute yeah, and yeah. it's only this way or that way right you could get free yeah but you probably think you're free because you're on either one of the sides. I was just going to say, I already <laughs> so. can hear the comments. I already can see it. Mm-hmm. The super saints and the super Christians are going to say, no, you got to choose either be hot or cold right. or God will spew you out. Like Which that scripture, you I don't know that, if, like, that, that's in, what it really means. But, anyway. but I don't know if in like evangelical <laughs> white spaces, if that scripture is used as much. Exactly. But in the black church, that is a big deal. Like oh, yeah. you got to choose. You got to be hot, hot on fire for God <laughs> or either you're going to be cold because if you in the middle... God mm-hmm. is going to spit you out. Mm. And it's like, no, 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 no. no. First Actually, off, what does that even mean? <laughs> what is the, <laughs> no, for real. What is the context? What is the scripture really saying? Mm. Because at the end of the day, we need to embrace more nuance yes. and we need to live in the gray. Yeah. We need to embrace the gray mm. areas because we do not know everything. We don't, we don't have absolutes and certain. So everything that we're, Let me pause you right here, right now. Everything that you believe right now is all on faith. That means a maybe. That means a possibility. (laughs) We're just believing that this stuff is real and that it is what it is and what we're reading. Faith is the substance of Of things things hoped for. for. You know what substance is? That's very small. Right. It's a substance of things actually hoped for. Hope. Hope. We hope it happens. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's not like hope that it happens not even that the evidence that you can actually see it happening yeah right and so yeah. i love the part you just said uh, about the middle because where the middle is where you're balanced mm. right a lot of times Good. like if you just stand where you are like if you only stand on your left foot you only you're unbalanced you stand yeah. on your right foot some of y'all know that when y'all be exercising y'all doing your calisthenics yeah. you got to fall but mm -hmm. when you stand on both feet you're yeah. standing in the middle and you're balanced mm -hmm. what we have taught people to do is not we've taught them to be unbalanced and unhealthy right mm. what happens if we actually could stand on both ends yeah we could actually see the beauty on both sides yeah that, like, that's good and we're missing out on the beauty of both that. sides and we're missing out on balance and so the non-binary thinking is more balanced than it is unbalanced and that's what i've learned from my journey in these last couple of years of yeah. actually opening up to that yeah you know that's so beautiful i think that's a great place to end it i think so too. i think that's great <laughs> so we want to challenge you to go ahead and go off in the comments yeah, let us know do. what does this mean to you where are you in the process of binary thinking yeah. have you um been in a space where you're thinking everything is one way or another it's right wrong black mm -hmm. white or have you embraced non-binary thinking and you're living in the gray you're living in the nuanced space yeah. within your faith in all areas as mm -hmm. we said from the very beginning deconstructing is not just limited to your faith it's no. it goes beyond that it expands into every area of your life things that you were taught yeah. how do you unlearn those things to become the best version of you mm -hmm. how do you unlearn those things to now realize what you now believe yeah. so we want to hear from you go off in the comments yeah, or you could click the link that is in the description and leave us a voice note we would love to hear your voice yeah. and feature you here on the podcast and don't have any fear <laughs> don't have any fear if you want to remain anonymous we will put you on anonymous yes. um you don't have to put your name out there if you don't want but we do want to hear your experiences yes. and hear your voice and feature you on the pod we would love to have you <laughs> so, so be a feature <laughs> yes so this has been a great episode Yes. and we want to thank Great you guys so much for pressing the play button whether that be on audio or whether that be visual on yes. youtube thank you so much you. please go ahead and hit the like button subscribe to the podcast yes, whether share. it's visually you know or or an audio follow yeah. us whatever yeah. do all the things y'all do all the things get it out there <laughs> <laughs> and join the community and join the safe space yes. that we are building here we just want you to know that you have a place to be a part yeah. so be sure to leave us a five-star review yes please do <laughs> look let me not tell you what to do because that's what the church always does but we love five star reviews but leave us yeah <laughs> le leave us a review and let us know what you think of the podcast yeah. and yeah we're excited Fun. it was so good hopefully this was helpful to you we thank you for joining us here yes thank you for joining us here at unfiltered with Stevon and Britt this is a safe space helping you to freely think and discover what you believe peace peace